yesterday. Yes. Yeah. The, it was yeah, very dominant. It could be part. It, it could happen. A vengeful so they spear go for, for the face again. All right. Okay. So they must be hoping they can squeak the Lena through in the second phase, but you'd imagine IG will focus that. Could oh, be. Or may take it, may take it themselves. It's Lena yeah. or Tinker. Yeah. Which one do they want? They know that Tinker's going to go in the second phase, for sure. They can pick Tinker ban Lena, probably. Yep. Could do it the other way around, too, if they wanted to. And not Tinker's not... That we have seen a yeah. lot of uh, support Lenas coming out from IG as well. They could pick yeah. up Lena hoping that maybe Newbie won't ban out of Tinker because they're expecting they to see OP Lena. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's possible. Yeah. And then do they you can want still have Jug, both. though? I don't know. That's the I thing. It's like Healing Ward is so good versus Tinker. Yeah, and he's also pretty good versus just Lena in general. Yeah, too. and Lena too. So maybe not. Hmm. Lena so they go for It's a good call. Very dominant for mid lane. Lena Earth Spirit, pretty scary. That's a flexible in the first two as well. Yeah. Because they can switch if they need. Exactly. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Newbie wants to just, you know, make sure that there's no Tinker in the game or take the gamble. I think that Lina's a really smart pick in that first phase, isn't it? Against Newbie, because Newbie will know that IG can play in different positions yeah. as well. Yeah, just leaves it very open-ended. It's open not, not like it's an, a, a, like a, an empty threat with some teams. You kind of, they could, they could, but they never do, so you can figure it out. Yeah. Well, another ban for Exorcist. <laughs> Legion Commander. And a fun ban game, isn't it? Hey, yeah. yes. there it is. The Naga oh, ban. Okay. Thank you, IG. <laughs> 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 Maybe a little bit too excited for that one, but <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, it, I think that's appropriate excitement. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Legion Commander ban, I mean, we mentioned it before, like yeah. super high win rate, incredibly good versus Juggernaut, just very strong laner. I think Maybe, maybe they were... Mm, they maybe could might regret that Lena. Not picking the Lino and the Jug up early. Yeah, possibly. Could I like the Venge Terrorblade combo too, but that's like not that great anymore after the Lina's picked up. Hmm, what else is there? XXS Heroes. He played Batrider, wasn't that great. Yeah. Was so Newbie also actually versus takes, Venge. Newbie takes out the Abaddon. That's pretty surprising. I, I do it. like it versus Jug, but I just haven't seen Invictus play it that much. Could that say something about what they're planning on getting? I think it's just it's really good versus Juggernaut in lane, too. Okay. Yeah. It's super annoying for him to deal with. You can't, like, not attack him with Omni. I mean, I get, you yeah. can, but he was, he's just going to run at you the entire time. So mid lane might be an issue for Newbie. Lena plus Earth Spirit is one of the most fearsome dual lanes in the mid lane. I would say maybe Monkey King Lena is also kind of up there, but yep. Lena Earthspear is very, very scary. If you put something weak like, you know, Invoker, let's say, or most melee heroes, you'll get destroyed. So the TA IG maybe? Takes out. Yeah, TA is possible. You can see TA. Hey. So IG takes out Ember and Newbie grabs the. Okay, so they put KP on more of just a straight initiator rather than a heavy team fighter like Mag. Run at Lena. Run at Lena, yep. I mean, that works. Yeah. All right. It's one approach. It's also, if you do get the Agonims online, it's pretty good versus the Burst. Yeah, and the, the return damage is uh, really good for a fast attacker like Lina, against a fast attacker like yeah. Lina, rather. Did see, like, yeah, a couple times, like, Sumail played yeah, Lina, almost, almost killed, himself killed himself on, himself. The, on the yeah. return. Yeah. You gotta be careful with that. Also, the, uh, again, depends on what type of Lina that is, though. Mm -hmm. We'll see if uh, IG reveals that with their third pick. It also makes their safe lane like hard to Centaur kind of limits their safe lane options sometimes because he dominates a lot of them. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. The re like uh, having the Centaur, like you kind of since the Earth Spirit wants to like roam around, then the Centaur is going to be able to get everything unless the Earth Spirit focuses him. So now it's like they have to peel their attention away. It's like, do we give Centaur full levels or do we want to pressure mid with the Cent with the Lena Earth Spirit? Lena tends to be a pretty okay with himself though. And IG goes back for the uh, Warlock this game around. And hereby locking in Lina for OP. Mm -hmm. More team fight, Fatal Bonds plus Earth Spirit. We've seen that combo quite a lot mm -hmm. in the past. That's a question mark face. Hmm. 
trying to solve the drafting puzzle. What are we looking at mid for SCCC? Hmm. You're going up against Selena. There's nothing really that, I mean, the TA is the best matchup. So yes, they Chef? That stuff might be a bit susceptible of the tough, Rome tough and, lane. Yeah. He, like, has to get a BKB 100% pretty early, like, the second item, I was. I like this Coddle pickup. This is uh, something that Newbies had, like, I think, one of the most success here, I want to say. Maybe, like, two or three games where they just very heavily dominated with the Keeper. Even though it was, like, five position Keeper, they would farm an Agnum's fast. This time they do have Avenge, at least, to back up on it. So OIG so goes for the Burning for Spectre. Burn. So they're going for, like, a four protect one kind of lineup with uh, Lina. Is this where you dump Centaur and keep her in the offlane and pressure him? Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> That's still trying to never think of fun the, for spec. Just really trying to think of the SCCC hero. It's not a whole lot ones left Invoker, that don't dude. suffer. It, Invoker <sighs> is the one that but he suffers, but he yes. did, does give them the massive amount of team fight, and then it gives them a little bit more combination with like the Centaur, Sunstrike com like combo. You don't have enough damage really to burst. That's kind of what they're lacking on Newbie too, is team fight and burst potential. As Triple C played Invoker against IG both of the games they played during the group stages, and he lost both. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not necessarily because of the Invoker, but generally, you know you would expect maybe a little bit of, of more of a fight than he was able to give in, in that particular series. Next band could be a little bit of a telltale one, even though, of course, it's incredibly good versus the Keeper Light, so that might be what they're thinking, but it could also be that they're looking at the Invoker, possible. Okay. Yeah. I also like it for spec. You can control the Haunt Illusions very well. Yeah. And I think Invoker generally just does pretty well versus Illusion-based carries. What type of hero would you like to see for uh, Ixxs? Still need like an <gasps> initiator. Oh, in wow. Damn. That's actually. That looks That's like really exactly good. like it. Yeah, that is scary good. Damn. It's incredible. So, IG thinks it might be a storm because of that Nyx ban. It definitely was a possibility. They're okay on disables for IG, but don't want to deal with that late game potential. They want to have the late game for themselves with the Spectre. What synergizes well with Spectre, though? Zeus! Nature's Prophet! Let's do globals! <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> so they oh, just go for... Axe. Okay, just okay. axe for themselves here. It's a little bit more meta. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a little bit more <laughs> understandable. Unfortunately, it would have been a lot of yes. fun, though. <laughs> gives them catch. It also gives them ways to catch the split-pushing Juggernaut. If he's, you know, spin TP, it gives you always that way to grab him up. Great versus Stampede, too. Great versus Stampede, as well. Great to set up for Warlock Ultimate. Yeah. Or Light Strike Array, or any kick and magnetize things. This is actually a very scary lineup for IG. I like what they've done. Invoker. <laughs> I'm not really seeing it that many other great picks. But. Mm. He's not as talkative as he normally is. Oh, never mind. Wow. <laughs> as soon as you say it, he's wow. like. Yeah. Oh, he's What'd you say to me, Shiva? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, please. What the, I'm sure there's more keeper combos that we've can seen. You read his, can you read his lips? Mm -hmm. St. Carl. <laughs> um. Well, he's agreeing with the pick, and it's oh. an OD. OD. Oh, very good versus the axe. That's a really good pick up here. You're always able to hassle the axe on this. It's be better lane. I mean, Lina still wins this matchup, but gives him also late game potential. I don't know. I think it's still very close, though. I like IG's draft. Hmm. I know what you're going to ask. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm going for 2 0 IG, perhaps. Really? Based on this draft. Okay. Yeah. Let's so do it. IG. They already okay, locked IG me in. I can't go back. Then? Yeah, I can't go back. Fog? This is a tough This one. is a very difficult one. Burning there's, Spectre. There's, there's a final in about two hours' time. So All right, you got it. time. You got time. <laughs> I'm going to go with IG as well. I'm going with newbie. There we go. I think they have better heroes for their players. SCCC can actually more comfort. Yeah, he has a hero that he can play. It's mm. good. Cool with that. Okay. Two for IG and one for newbie this time. Reminder that the two that have gone for IG went for newbie in the first game, and we all we'll know how that one worked out. Who knows how it works out in game two? One team are on the verge of making it to the grand final. The other are on the verge of elimination. Which way does it turn? Let's find out with our commentary team of gods and OD Pixel. Thanks, Red Eye, and indeed, we're ready for game two. IG ready to go once more against UB. They did it once. Can they do it twice this time? Switching it up a bit. We're seeing Spectre 
coming out. And in return, that final pick, the Outworld Devour. What do we make of it? Yeah, you liking the spec? We've seen a, seen yep. a little bit of success for it recently. We have. Uh, I've, I've liked when IG have picked it. It hasn't been like, a, let's just pick it all the time. They pick it in very specific situations. They pick it when they feel the hero is not going to get contested too much in lane. And you can actually get some good farm and scale well into the late game. Similarly, though, I like Newbie's draft. I think the last pick OD was a great answer to the axe. I think it's a great hero for SEC. And I'm kind of with Ben. Like, they got heroes that really suit their players in this game, which they kind of struggled with last game. The Ursa didn't seem like it was played all that well. So I think this game around, Newbie's not going to have that issue. And of course, Unite. We saw in last game. Very solid performance, even though they did lose on that Luna, did everything that he could to try and. Scrape that win against the big old alchemist on the juggernaut. We saw uh, it was yesterday, wasn't it? U9 jug. Um, it was yesterday, yes. wasn't it? Uh, the days are a blur. <laughs> yeah, they are all, uh, are all a bit, but yeah, we, we have seen some U9 jug. Yeah, I, I'm pretty, yeah, it was yesterday against yeah. EG, right? One of the games, one sure. of the games. Uh, it's uh, all a blur. You tell me it happened, out. I believe but you. But <laughs> U9, this is his hero. I know this is his hero. So, yeah, watch out for what U9 is going to be able to do this game. But yeah, burning spectre. The classic the newbie. Oh, what are they going to make uh, in terms of laning decisions? We already see. Uh, it's, they're going to go for a level one smoke. They've got a lot of a lot of potency with that level one. That dire observer ward, though, I believe may have clipped them just towards the south. So they, I think it's IG all, should be aware of this. It perhaps saw KP. Yeah. From, uh, if if they were looking, yeah. they they should know that this is coming. And indeed, IG. Who do they have near? They they are leaving Warlock on his own on the high ground. Q. Yeah, ditching. Perhaps Q's just trying to scout the smoke and then he, run back he's to just safety. Looking, yeah, he's going to be very careful. And yeah, realizes can't get that bounty rune. Attack up. And it's not going to throw anything out. Let's kill the uh, Illuminate. Yep. No, no leak or such. And yeah, no, no way that they could really chase him down. I like that. Making sure you scout the smoke as well, mm. not just letting them grab the bounty rune. Because if you don't scout that smoke, perhaps they head mid. And then you've got like a Venge Coddle. Not the best level one ganking duo, but a ganking duo that can get a first blood on the Lena. So you protect your mid just by making sure you figure out where they are smoking. But talk about the Spectre having like an uncontested lane with the later on picks, that kind of changed a bit. Like the Venge Coddle lane really going to give him a tough time. And he will be good against the Coddle, like once he has some items and farm. Oh, they moved him away. Yeah, he's going off. Lane. And in response, I mean, yep. you'd be doing exactly what you said they'd want to. They've just sent the Coddle straight down yep. to the bottom as soon as I'll they realize that IG switched their lanes up in reaction. Yep. Ben mentioned something like, oh, are they going to just do a Coddle center in the offlane to contest Spectre? Well, they get it. It's in the safe lane, but that's A-OK. -okay. Nice thing down here for Burning is that he will have a shrine to play around with, but he may quickly decide this is also a lane he just can't farm that well in. May end up with like an Iron Talon just jungling a bit in like the kind of once the laning stage kind of falls apart. So this middle lane, the 1v1 is Triple C versus OP, OD versus Lena, the top lane. But if we go being made onto XXS, U9. Let's have a Blade Fury. Fury if they want to try and go for it. Yeah, and XXS, yeah, realizes this. TP's back to safety. And uh, we'll get himself away from that one. Actually TPing down towards the, the bottom mm. shrine. So moving away from Toppen and oh. DGF, sending Burning back up there. They really, really want to keep Burning away from the pressure of that Sentinel Coal. Yeah. Took the shrine use as well, but Burning's already top, so just uses it to, to swap the lanes up. But we'll see Coddle perhaps even just rotate again. There's three heroes up top. You can't really contest the Spectre with just two, but... Oh, Avoka. Get some of the slow. Not quite level two, though. So no follow-up stun. Nope. And the Centaur versus Axe is not a good matchup for Centaur by any means, but you know, at least goes okay enough for Centaur that you may just want to tr continue the trial lane up top. And the lane. Well, SCCC has got a lane, has got the wave coming in. OP the lead at the moment. And in this 1v1, and uh, pretty much I think that was as, as the panel predicted, wasn't it? The Lena would, would yep. still have the slightly better time in this lane. Yeah, better matchup for Lena 1v1, but. Coming out of the lane stage, OD, very good hero against the burst damage and against the axe, being able to just astral flame as soon as he goes in for a blink call. Save teammates as well against the, the potential catch and pretty good at later on when Spectre gets pretty tanky, just being able to steal in off the Spectre, one of the heroes that can perhaps burst Spectre down better than others. Bottom lane, KP not able to get the stomp off as XXS. Uh, indeed, finding the CS down here. The U9 as well, so this tri lane back on the bottom. Centaur straight up to the top to break it up. So, newbie, yeah. do continue to react to the movements of IG, wanting to take that Centaur away from the Axe, as you mentioned, and, and hopefully find him a bit more on that top lane against the Spectre. Yep, Centaur uh, can actually be pretty annoying for Spectre lane against, whereas 
Uh, you don't really want the Centaur versus the Axe because of that whole matchup. And also, similarly, Jug is a really good hero against Axe. He's actually one of the heroes that can kill him in lane and make sure that he doesn't get too much out of it. So with just a two-hero combo like the Venge plus Jug, level two spin, like you can find some kills or at least force him to TP back to base away from the Blade Fury. Mid lane, with the go being made here. Light Strike Ray from OP, though, will be slightly off. Uh, CCC. We'll live to see another day, but indeed the CS difference really starting to escalate with OP doubling that of S Triple C bottom lane. One spin with all those creeps. Okay. RNG not quite there for XXS. Wasn't even. I mean, two spins wouldn't have been a kill. Three would have been like maybe very low HP, but close to a kill. But wasn't expecting to get killed. But at least do some more damage with that call. Does pull the wave off. XXS able to get level four already. The X pick proving to be pretty difficult to deal with and. Right now, the Jug at bottom is probably thinking, how do I get him out of this lane? The phase boots is where you've got that movement speed edge, and perhaps you can look to actually be able to chase him down with the Blade Fury. Yeah, XXS just toying with the, the Berserker's core potential. And so U9, having to be very, very careful. Top lane, the pressure onto Bernie. Hasn't actually been able to slow him down that much. He, they've been moving around with these early levels. He's now level four, and uh, is up there on the CS, 20 CS. So, even though Newbie certainly feels like they did draft and, and have made the movements to try and shut him down, it's not necessarily happening. Yeah, the Axe pick was really good in the sense that it did give them strong lanes. Looking at Axe, Lena, as your two solo laners, both of these are heroes that win their 1v1 matchups, so I think Newbie have felt like they've had to try to move around their lanes a bit more and just be a bit more active with their supports, and they haven't found the kills, they haven't been all that successful. No, we'll be able to pick up the side pull and sell some of the bigger creeps. Yeah, XX is nearly level five. That's the money for the Tranquil's completion. Top lane, IG making the movement round. See if they can cut these blood. off from behind. Kaka and KP will be in trouble. They'll look for the easier target first. He's trying call. to block the roll. Really KP nice trying to help off. out. The smash comes out but first. Will connect, so they do get Kaka at least. Questionable whether they can actually bring down KP as well. That, no uh, chance. Yeah, too big, but they get themselves that first blood IG. Yeah, heads up from KP to try and block the roll, but the damage with a dagger plus the Warlock Shadow Web is going to be too much anyways, and he also lands a, a nice little bulb smash. Immediate TP bottom. You've got three heroes here. You want to bare minimum force him to TP out of the plane. So they can get a kill out of this. Magic Missile. Illuminate. Illuminate. It's going to fly by as XXS. Falling low, but with the spins, U9 in trouble. They'll put the healing ward out. One more spin would do it. He needs the spin. Fakes there with the body blocks, though. We'll oh. keep U9 alive. XXS is able to survive, and in doing so, nearly killing off Nubian in return. At the same time, top lane, burning Baboka and Q. Move forward and get themselves another kill. Burning is having a pretty grand old time in this laning stage, despite Nubi's best efforts. XXS outplayed them so hard bottom. He was just unlucky not to get that kill. There was enough creeps and heroes hitting him. You'd expect one more spin, but either way, he still comes out on top. Like, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't get the kill. It would have been amazing to be able to get a 1v3 solo kill on a Jug. But even without it, he is still winning this lane, getting a lot of farm, about to hit level 6. Jug is struggling here. Doesn't have any real good mana sustain as well. Has only one spell available, be it the Blade Fury or the Healing Ward. Next with the level 6 is going to really try and up the pressure on him. Uh, with the 6 next time, that Jug does not survive. And if, he, if he had it there, he would have certainly got the double, potentially. And uh, this uh, Infused Raindrop doing a lot for XXS as well. For sure. Just in the Illuminate, Harass being eliminated, and then as well, that, that go that Newbie made on him on the bottom. Without that drop, he probably would have gone down. I believe saved him at least a couple of times. Yeah, stopped the initial magic missile and the second illuminate damage, doing, what, 240 damage. So the first illuminate missed, but even yeah. if it landed, I don't think it would have made a difference. Like, he was still going to be able to probably survive at least a good chunk of the damage. I see some TPs coming down from IG to this bottom lane. Maybe seeing they can bait Newbie into an unfavorable position. Yeah. Radiant Vision scouts it, though, and yeah, they, they drop a sentry immediately. It's one of those things, you TP that bottom lane, you may as well just drop a sentry, because if they see you, you're not necessarily wasting your time, but you've got to change your approach to this gank. If they don't have wards, you can just wrap around the trees, come in from behind. Without, you've got to find another way in. Uh, U9 just being held back on the creeps as it was on the side. They need to get the Jug level 6. That's where they can kind of try and fight back using the threat of the Omni Slash. But until that point, this lane's very difficult to play. And scarily, Burning is level 6 himself, so Haunt is available. Doesn't have the mana to use Haunt with a Spectral Dagger, though, so that does make a big difference. 
really got to try and conserve your mana as much as possible. Has gone for the kills and used it a bit aggressively up top. So maybe looking to bring out a clarity or like his urn to give him some mana regen. Q actually grabs a haste ring straight back down towards the bottom. Pabokra has moved elsewhere. I uh, believe IG just realizing it's very hard for them to find something down here as newbie well, they, they knew. Capey. And the question is, yeah, if Yubi can get a kill move. out of this, they've got Stampede to close the gap. XXS will be the focus. Does have Q nearby him. Can they do anything to save this axe? He's been surrounded with the magical damage. It should be enough to bring him down, and it will. They'll get the kill. So rotation from KP, securing that they can put an end to this axe's reign on this bottom lane. The TPS CC as well. They were probably expecting IG to actually turn and fight, but IG made definitely the right call. They didn't try and, I mean, they tried to save him with a Shadow Word, but they weren't going to fight to keep him alive. It was just a Shadow Word and leave him on his own. So five-man rotation bottom from Newbie just to get the one kill. Not the, the best investment, but ultimately OD's able to just rotate right back to mid lane just with a, maybe a one miss creep wave. Then Unite. Didn't need to use that Omni Slash as well for that one. So, can still rely on that if he finds IG out of position, but it's, it is a very hard game to get a good usage of that out, especially with that Haunt on Burning. Definitely ways to, to add multiple members into a, a takedown. And in fact, top lane Kaka getting gone on him with the roll four from Baboka. Another kill involvement oh, that Burning finds himself in. That's earn charges. I, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, from a feel perspective, when you get those first earn charges, the game gets so much nicer as a Spectre. You take a bit of damage, you heal yourself up, you can use it to farm neutrals with, like, because the problem with Spectres, you don't really get good HP regen if you want to, like, that's why the hero doesn't jungle well, because you have no HP regen. Earn charges give you that. If you want to gank, it's an extra, like, 100-ish damage nuke that you can use offensively with your dagger. So you haunt, you dagger, you earn offensively. Very likely you get a kill, and that kill gets you, re replenishes your earn charges. So you kind of snowball off of the early earn charges on Spectre, and it helps you farm, helps you gank, so... Very important to find that first kill. If you just get earned on Spectre and then you don't get a kill or you just sit top farming for the next five, ten minutes, you, you just wasted 875 gold. And worth noting as well, looking at the net worth, OP on this. This Lena is certainly having the time of his life in these opening stages. We saw the mid lane, as you mentioned, with the rotations from SCC, getting freed up for OP and uh, very easy being able to spam out the wave, get all the farm that he could wish for. He's going to have a... Fast level 10, get that respawn talent that we're seeing all the leaners outside of Sumail pick up, I imagine, and could look to rotate off of that with the low respawn. It's definitely, it reduces some of the risk of rotating around and getting involved in fights, because if, hey, you go down, but you get a kill, well, you respawn instantly, you're right back up on the map, so. There we go, it's level 10. Will be still some time before the, the Bloodstone comes up, but I say some time, he's farming so well that maybe it's only gonna be like two, three more minutes, just needs the vitality boost and the recipe. Down bottom Q, gets the D ward. The rest of IG have had it down here, apart from burning, but of course with that horn available, I mean, he'd love to get himself involved in a, in a potential kill onto U9 if the rest of IG can find their way towards him. But already, Newbie know what's up. They are heading the, the hell away for this bottom lane. They do not want to have to tackle IG head on at this stage. And they'll just have to let this tier one go. Yeah, they see the Lina coming down there. If they want to defend it, they have to defend with Centaur and when Lina's not involved. Lena with the low respawn now, and that's kind of exactly what I mentioned. Where Lena, low respawn, these rotations, much lower risk, and if they, you can be a frontliner and go down instantly respawn or close to instantly respawn and come back and join a fight. So we'll see Lena probably play a bit more aggressively now that she's hit level 10. Mid lane, they'll get the trade. The, the, the bigger tower to be claiming at this stage as well, so nice little pickup. We'll be newbie playing the farm game as they head back for a Midas on the OD. Imagine Centaur's Blink Dagger is kind of going to be the timing which they He's very to, close as well, KP. Yeah. That's when they start smoking around the map, trying to find kills. Try and dink this Axe particularly. He's very... Axe and Lean are probably the two problem heroes. Spectre, I'm sure, up there. You don't want Spectre to get a fast Radiance, but... You're ganking Axe, it means he's not ganking you. He's the he's the tempo controlling hero that can be really problematic. Similarly though, a Radiance timing from Spectre. Slow that down as much as possible. Uh, U9 moving himself up to this top lane. And uh, Baboka will be in the neighborhood, has this Invis rune. Could potentially get Kaka in a lot of trouble as Burning comes across. There's the boulder smash. They'll try and use the Stampede to get him out. It's not going to work. Omni will come in from U9. Gets a kill in return. XXS with the blink in. Berserker's called back. Needs some more damage. It's actually new B the side that has the backup, but they're scared. They don't want to fight this close to IG's Tier 1. And they will start to back off. 
So just a one for one there, but of course, the bigger one for Newbie, getting that kill on Spectre, absolutely massive. Yeah. Doesn't look like they'll want to commit with the Spectre kill. They also know Spectre's respawning with a haunt, so if you kind of have a long drawn out fight and that Spectre respawns, haunt comes in, it's going to very heavily swing against you. And importantly, they didn't really know where Lena was. Lena was dying, wasn't actually that close, was rotating from mid lane, but there was a small window if they want to try and kill Axe before Lena got there that they just didn't want to risk. Rock now up. Chaotic Offering for Q is going to be the, the big team fight spell that IG look to use. Yeah, they're going to smoke, try and force a pick off with the Axe, and then if newbie respond, you drop the Rock. If they don't respond, well, you take the pick off and you try and push a tower. So, very clear idea in mind. It's a gank and push kind of idea, or if there's a team fight, you've got the tools needed to win the team fight. Oh, good scam from newbie. They know that they're in the neighborhood, and they will respect that. Yeah, they should. Almost certainly very aware of the timings. They know that XXS has that blink from that last fight. Should probably ditch this one. Oh, SCC. SCC coming a little close. Tries to jump in, but the Astral gets him before the call is off. Burning still moves forward with the Horn. A magic missile from Faith holds back the Spectre. SCC will be okay. Now, New B, they have the numbers. Stampede Juice trying to close the gap. Good jump in with KP with the two man who stop. The Golems dropped to return by Q, but they've lost XXS on the axe. But Boca and OP turn towards. The eventual spirit and just staying there, accepting their fate. As but IG end up getting the double with OP. Yeah, no Omni Slash. It, it was a great initiation from KP. They win that fight if they have Omni Slash, but they don't have Omni Slash. Coddle's not there. Coddle's just chilling at top lane farming. Kaka's TP was actually three seconds off cooldown. He could have TP'd either to the tier one mid or the shrine if he had his TP up, but didn't have the option to do so when that fight broke out. And as a result, not the worst fight, like you trade offliner for offliner with the support bench going down. I actually think that's okay for newbie, and if anything, strategically things are fine for them now. They don't have to worry about the rock. No, they're going to find something else. Kaka, they yeah, have been enjoying his time on that top lane. But he gone. Yeah, now with rock and haunt down, this is theoretically where newbie should be looking to play aggressive, but. The catch on the coddle like kind of limits that, some of that aggressive potential. They did take the tier one top tower. They got an objective in there, but another problem for newbie is not only do they not have Omni slash that fight, SCC has just got the Midas like with Treads. He's not exactly that ready to start fighting until he has at least a four star for the extra mobility. Hasn't even skilled his ultimate yet, so we'll see that point coming very soon. An OP completed Bloodstone 15 minutes in. So next time round, oh they've got to be very careful where they choose to fight Newbie because essentially this Lena's is going to be in there twice with the second life. Yeah, with the quick, with instant respawn. Don't fight near enemy towers unless you're going to dominate the fight, which is maybe a possibility. Feels like they want to try and get Jug up to to level nine, uh, level level twelve. Sorry, uh, level two ultimate as soon as possible. That's going to be a, that makes a big difference in these fights on heroes like Spectre, who Spectre can survive a level one Omni Slash, but you can't survive a level two Omni Slash. So. Uh, same for heroes like Axe, uh, and there's no Crimson Guards or anything like that on an Axe, so if you have a level 2 Omni Slash, you can actually get that solo kill uh, to start a fight, and it's worth using an Omni Slash for those kind of kills that'll win you a team fight. Smoke time from Faith and KP. Ready to try and find something, but again, it's it at this timing where Burning has Haunt back online. The Rock is down for like maybe another 20 seconds or so. It's Perhaps that's what they're trying to use. And It does seem like a very small window, that they get some deep wards down, they may be able to scout out the Warlock and actually get the jump on him is the other big thing. And that's exactly what they've set up. So they, they get the ward down bottom, they won't find a kill with this smoke, but they set themselves up to succeed if they go for that bottom tier one tower. Although I'm not really feeling that that's the play right now. They need to just play this farming game. Keep Coddle top, he's going to keep Illuminate spamming. OD's just farming the jungle, and then they're just sitting behind the jug at bottom, protecting him in case he gets ganked. You are worried about that Axe. One of the better heroes to play against Jug. Uh, the Blink Call, if, when you've got Blade Mail, completely destroys the Jug, and you do have to be very wary of that with the Astral or Event Swap. Now they'll get themselves a courier here with this smoke up. There were a lot of pings around behind the tower. They, they scanned around it, yeah. it, it went off, maybe expecting to be more than just the Keeper of the Light up there, uh, but it was just the Cottle and a courier. So I'd you take it, and we'll sweep down towards the bottom. Burning felt safe again. For that time, he was hiding up in the trees, and they've actually found a big pick as well with the jump in onto the OD. SCCC out as well, a courier and an OD kill. The Burning able to get his hands on and involved in. Newbie at the same time to find a tier one in trade, but the TP is already starting to come through. And there is still the Chaotic Offering to drop. And with that in mind, Newbie, they back up as soon as they start to see members coming in. IG putting a lot of pressure on that mid tower with OP's double damage. And IG, again, 18 minutes in, 
Certainly seeming to, to have the more favorable time here. They're the aggressors right now. Yeah, it's it's newbie who are just really trying to split the map and maximize the resources available. They have OD solo farming. They have Coddle solo pushing and farming the top lane. And then the other three heroes are playing somewhat together. OD just slightly misread. Like, I probably realized they smoke ganked the courier when the courier got chopped by the axe without actually scouting the axe. And he just thought the smoke had probably worn off. Like, he's like, all right, I'll go back to farming. This smoke's worn off. They're not going to be able to get from my, their secret shop to the other jungle. But they actually still had a tiny bit of duration left on the smoke to swoop through that mid lane and actually get in and into the, the jungle in time to gank him. So Radiant's coming soon. And this is a, a good timing for Burning Spectre as things develop into the mid game. Newbie need to try and find a response to this off of some of their new item pickups. And again, one of those games where things are going to get harder for KP and his initiations. We saw in, in the first game just the Radiance causing absolute havoc for, uh, for the blink potential. And uh, as you said, with the time in this game, it's going to be potentially a similar story. Blade Mail is now there for XXS and Shadow Blade for OP. Newbie will smoke. They're ready to go. They're trying to use this time where Haunt is still unavailable, but everything else is there for IG. They have Chaotic Offering. Newbie, they really need to find the perfect jump. They'll head through the jungle, but IG themselves very grouped up, almost seeming prepared for, for this movement, and indeed they are. Smoke on smoke. Faith looking for the leader, but immediate silence is there from the Boca into the boulder smash. Faith has been separated from the team and taken down, and already the rest of Newbie, they scatter. They realize that they cannot stick around for this fight. IG knew what was up. They will get away, but again, not finding what they were hoping for with that smoke rotation. They're just playing for the pickoff and trying to see where they can go from there, but IG ready for it, and the big reason why they're ready for it is those two deep wards they've got. They see well into the newbie side of the map, and if you don't see anyone farming like around the top side of the map or the middle side of the map, one of those wards expires now, you know something's something's up. Like, why aren't they farming I mean, where look, it's safe? Look, look how close that D wall must have been on the left, that yeah. sentry. How close is that one? Ah, it's just a little out, but they, they had the right idea, Newbie. They knew that IG had this deep vision. They didn't quite get it. KP, only taken down towards that bottom lane. Ah, Looked to put the pressure on his burning. He had again revealing himself Ooh. and a couple of creeps away from that Radiance. You can kill him with the Jug, perhaps, and he may think he's safe down here. Doesn't have much mana. It looks like he's just yeah trying to pull back as much as possible with the radiance money. There's no way yeah. you risk hanging around. And he has that horn ready to join the fight top. If IG force newbie back with his tier two push. Yep, he's ready to go. Shrines up, so he's got the mana, and there's no real reason to be bottom lane with all the heroes missing from the map and no vision to protect you. He'll sit on his high ground if he has to. Agonims now there for the keeper of the light. So they will yep. have that little bit of an edge in, in the vision game and the heals in the daytime, but as it seems, IG just making the most happen during this night time. Yeah. And it's not looking to be a pretty night for Newbie at all, as they will lose another tier two. I was saying, just the first tier two on this top lane. Lina's kind of hitting her peak now, or at least one of, one of them with the Shadow Blade and Bloodstone. Very low respawn, very good pushing hero, the level 15 talent, giving you all that extra right click damage as well. You just constantly throw your spells out, you're getting attack speed from the Fiery Souls, so Lina is the, the sieging machine in some ways. It, one of the limitations you see this IG drive, you think, oh, they can't really push all that well, but Lina, some of these builds can make up for that. Our patience from KP and Unite to find something. Hey, we'll see OP come out now, but the Horn actually is gonna mean that they have to TP out immediately. The Horn, of course, primarily used for this top lane, where the go is being made. Ult will be dropped by SCCC, but it's IG dropping both of them. Omni Slash comes through, trying to recover the fight. Unite, he will get one of them. It is just the Warlock. And he himself now backing off at Burning, playing around in the base. Kaka forced away for the Shrine, will survive just. Uh, IG once again with the follow through jump down, take down U9. And it's all falling apart really for Newbie. 12 to 4, 22 minutes in. Oh. This game, IG certainly showing us that they can make it happen. Yeah, and th they don't need OP playing the Alchemist. <laughs> yeah, they, they can really use his full hero pool seen it a bit where they're quite happy to put him on different heroes when needed heroes he maybe even hasn't played a whole lot and the kind of somewhat newcomer at least to the international land scene in op is having a fantastic showing here at dac that was just such a kind of unfortunate for a newbie that they were setting up about to get a kill on the lena that was just gonna be a blink hoof stop in the omni slash if they wanted to get the kill perhaps they didn't have detection which may have limited them able to go for that omni slash kill the stun duration probably wouldn't have been enough to burst her burst her down but 
getting caught at top and haunt revealing it just completely ruined any of newbie's plans there Another one two more money in the bank for op keeping that strong lead on this lena kp seeing if you can get the jump but op just a little too speedy i mean with those stacks and the shadow blade very very slippery at this stage of the game for newbie to try and get a catch on it's very speedy and newbie are gonna have to probably play around the daytime vision soon that may be the call but they're gonna smoke up first and know that daytime is coming in 25 seconds so around when the fight might break out it'll be very close to that day advantage learning and to sell next not, not changing too much from the expected build and he will tp away Let's see if they head towards that shrine showing good discipline XXS is there at the moment time and time again newbie have gone for these like big four-man smokes when they're behind and it just feels like they're not connecting they can just... they kill this axe Perhaps. Looks like Emails out. Horn there as well. Newbie choosing to take this fight. Boulder Smash isn't going to connect. Jump in and bottom the Omni Slash, bringing down XS very, very low. He's actually keeping himself alive with the Shadow Word. XXS making you not work for it. They'll finally kill him. This time Newbie getting a kill. OP can't quite find Faith. Dukes out the, the Dragon Slave. And now OP could be in trouble himself. The man in Elite bringing him low. He's going to get stunned up. Do they have detection? They don't. OP getting the Shadow Blade off in time will escape. And it ends up just being the offlaner for an offlaner. Yeah, not getting the Lena there in the end. Kind of costly for them. It was ultimates thrown by the IG side, but ultimately not the biggest deal using a haunt for a fight like that. Burning more than happy with the outcome for himself, and the rock does come back up. That was not needed for them to trade offlaners that fight. Felt like so many things went right for Newbie in that fight. Like they kill the axe at the start. He doesn't get a blink call initiation. They isolate the Lena in a mana leak. They dodge the the Dragon Slave on the Venge to make sure that Venge actually stays alive. And even with everything kind of going right in terms of initiation uh, and dodging spells, they still couldn't manage to turn it into a big advantage. Mm -hmm. Newbie, I am Q. Burning is there, you know, with the Manta, but uh, the Chaotic Offerings drop. Maybe Newbie forgetting that it wasn't used in that last fight. XXS won't find the Blink Call, but the Roll 4 from the Boker will be on point as they punish U9. And yeah, just a bit of a blind attempt to get something going when I think the ult was still there from Q. Yeah, I imagine that was a call from Jug. Uh, it looked like he really wanted to go for the solo kill in Q. He just picked up the Manta with Diffusal, so he's got great solo kill potential on squishy heroes like like a Warlock. So he's probably just like, recall me in, I'm ready, I'll run at him oh. and go for the kill. Faith, swapping XXS down off the cliff. XXS plops the blade mail, a jump in for KP, but immediately stunned in return. Burning, looking towards the Centaur, the heals there from the Cottle. Burning. He's able to continue to chase though, but Voka rolls in with the slow. It's a third casualty on Yubi. As only the OD and the Cottle left. Kaka poking at Boka, but IG maintain control around the outsides of this Roshan pit. Are relatively low. The shrine already used for them. So may not be able to stick around to finish off Roshan. But at the least, again, another one team fight for IG. I mean, IG just keep pulling further and further ahead. You've got a very good late game draft as well with Spectre and Lena, as well as the way the Axe can counter the Juggernaut. Very hard to play too aggressive on Jug when you don't know where the Axe is or if you're about to get called into a blade mail. And the end result is that Newbie have not really been able to use this OD as an effective tool this game. We'll scale into the late game and SEC is going to continue just to look to farm. And it's just going to take that one big team fight where they... Newbie can take this. Yeah, that would be great. And no rock, they feel like they can go for it, but... There is a horn. Yeah. And they will have revealed their intentions, jumping in on the illusion. It is daytime, know what's up. Daytime with the heals, I guess they're going to try and commit to it. Can IG stop this? Down to half health here, Roshan. BKB picked up for CCC as well. P has his own BKB. And they're going to make the jump, Boulder Smash, and there's the horn. They know the situation, they're going to jump in and commit. XXS. Looking to move in with a call, but it'll be held back here by an Astral. OP pops the BKB, manning up. Look at the physical damage he can get out, but the Omni Slash is there from U9. They've taken out the Lina, who did manage to get the deny off, though. OP's going to be back in a clap as he's straight in with the respawn. XXS hitting the big calls. Double kill as he cleans up two of Newbie's major, me major members. And Kaka, the last one left surviving. So Newbie. They went for the all-out play there, hoping to get Roche, but IG were not to let it happen. I mean, 
risky calls, but those are the kind of calls you have to make when you're struggling and falling behind. They had the constant coddle heals and illuminate spam. Kaka did a ton of damage that fight. And they even isolate Lena and burst her down, but the problem is it's an insta respawn. Lena's yeah. got two life. She already has an Aegis when the fight starts. You're fighting yeah. 5v6. And, and that Bloodstone Deny just had salt to the wounds. Yeah, it heals up the whole team. I don't think the rest of the team had taken too much damage at that point, but ultimately there was not a whole lot Nubi could do on the second life of Lina. They effectively took that fight without an Omni Slash, just kind of how you look at that, with Lina's having an instant respawn, boots to travel into the Shrine. No real way to come out on top. Odie also didn't get an ultimate off. Not really sure that's a key difference maker, but trying to bring down Burning Spectre at some point using that Sanities does seem like a, a key thing in these team fights. As we see here, just the immediate haunt usage, giving the vision that was needed. We'll jump straight back in though, because Burning, he's found U9, and with the smash from Baboka holding him down, another very, very costly loss for Newbie. As U9 hits the deck again, OP wow. finding the solo kills as well. Absolutely huge on this Lina. Halfway towards the Agonims. And then life is not going to get pretty for some of these BKB calls. And, and, and the, yeah, the jug with the Blade Fury. Goodbye. Oh, wow. He's found more kills. IG are beginning to just run away with this game, too. An incredibly impressive performance. 23 to 5. Yubi are massively struggling. I mean, it's all fallen apart, gods. I mean, ever since the musical lanes, really, at the start, where they were unable to do much about burning, Axe XXS was still able to have a great time in lane. It felt like from that point onwards, Yubi, they didn't know what to do if they didn't succeed in shutting them down. Yeah, they didn't make the successful rotations early on using like the, the Centaur, particularly had that one gank on bottom. Oh, but... then we'll get the swap in here, but XXS okay. immediately reacts with the Blink Berserker's call. Gerogoff goes well, burning, falling low. He is He's down so the watch. Slow. He's round for round two. U9 stunned up the golem, punching the little kitty cat down as the ward falls. XXS back in. They'll chop off the head of the jug, and GG is called. China will have.